Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Hey guys, in this project we're going to be building a, uh, basically building a back end using a Laravel package called Backpack. And there's actually a, a lot of different packages that we can use to add and remove certain functionality from our back end because that's what, what it does is it basically gives you an admin area where you can, um, you know, you can manage your files, you can uh, manage pages with the page manager, you can create any type of CRUD resource, so create, read, update, and delete. And we're going to just kind of experiment with this a little bit. It's a, it's a really great suite of packages. All right, so uh, this is the documentation. Now there's a lot of commands that we're going to have to run as far as artisan commands go. Um, so we will be doing some copying and pasting. Uh, this here, Laravel Backpack.readme.io slash docs is this will give you kind of an introduction to Backpack. Uh, but what we want to do is go to install on Laravel 5.4. And if you're watching this in the future where uh, there's a newer Laravel version, it should be over here. You just want to follow that uh, along with this video. All right. So first thing it's telling us to do is create our project, which we've been doing throughout the course. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say composer create project and it's going to be a Laravel project and let's just call this we'll call it BP website for backpack website all right so let's run that and then we're going to do the usual we need to uh, go ahead and uh, let's see we want to go to C drive we're going to go to the Apache folder which is in the XAMPP folder Go to conf and then extra and then we're going to edit the vhost file all right and i have this entry here for the contact store application i'm just going to change this to bp website and, and that's bp website dot dev and then we just want to change the location to htdocs bp website slash public and we'll save that all right now we just need to add the entry in the host file so we're going to open up notepad as administrator oops and then let's go to open and you want to go to your host file which if you're on Mac or Linux should be in your ETC folder if you're on Windows it'll be in Windows system 32 drivers and then we're going to open up hosts and I'm just going to change this right here to BP website dot dev all right, so we'll save that and then we just need to restart Apache and we can do that oops, with the XAMPP panel. Oops. Kind of slow. OK, so I'm just going to stop Apache. And then start it back up. All right, we should be all set. So once Laravel is, is all set, uh, we should be able to go to bpwebsite.dev. All right, it's all set, so let's go try it. Oops, I got caps on. All right, so now our Laravel project is set up. Let's just CD into it. Okay, we'll clear this out. And then let's add it to Adam. See, we want BP website, select folder, there we go. All right, so let's get the core system installed of Backpack. So if we go over here, we already did that. Now the next thing we want to do is install the base package. All right, so right here we can do it through Composer. We can say require Backpack slash base. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say Composer require uh, Backpack what is it? Backpack slash base. Okay, and once we do that, we need to add the service provider. So right here, we're going to copy this. And we want to go to our config app.php file. And we're going to go down to the providers, which are right here. And let's just add it. Um, let's see, we'll just add it down here at the bottom. All right, we'll save that. 
And then we need to run a few commands. Okay, so this first one here, artisan vendor publish, and you can see it has these they have comments. This is going to uh, publish publish the config files, the language files, the views and the admin LTE files. So let's grab that. Make sure you get the, the flag here, the dash dash provider. All right. And we don't want the comments at the end. Let's copy. And then we'll go to Artisan. Okay, it's still going. It's still installing the base. It's quite a um, large package. All right, so that stopped. Let's go ahead and paste this command in. And then this next one here, publish config for notifications and alerts. So we want notifications and alerts. So I'm going to grab that. All right. And as you can see uh, in the config folder, there's now a backpack folder with base.php. So here we can we can change some things. I'm just going to wait till that finishes running, though, before I change anything. All right. We can change, for instance, the application name, the developer's name, all that stuff. All right. So before we run the next command, let's go ahead and just we'll say we'll change this to BP website. And uh, let's see, you could put a logo if you wanted to. I'm going to change the developer name. And feel free to put your own name and then the developer link. I'm just going to use eduonics.com show powered by uh, we'll just leave it at true. That's fine. Let's see date stuff route prefix. So if you wanted to have um, if you wanted your back end to be like slash staff or something like that, you could change it from being from admin, but we're going to keep admin and then we'll just keep the rest. So let's save that. All right. And then we're going to go back to our command line and we're going to run this second command right here. This this publish. All right. And once that's done, we're going to just go ahead and migrate. So PHP artisan migrate and this will actually create the users table and all that. So let's go ahead and run that. Oh, you know what? We didn't set up our database. That's right. Uh, so let's go to PHP my admin. Oops, why does it keep doing that? Local host oops, so slash PHP my admin. And we're going to create a new database called BP website. OK, now we need to go over to our dot end file here and add in the database, which is going to be BP website and the username, which will be for me, it's going to be root and then my password. All right, let's change the app name up here to BP website. All right, so let's save that. And then we're also going to uh, go to the app. Uh, where is it? The app service provider. So app providers, app service provider. And we're just going to add in here. Use illuminate slash support slash. Uh, actually, it's going to be facades slash schema. And then in the boot function, we're just going to say schema. And then we want default string length, which we're going to set to 191. All right, we'll save that. All right, so now we should be able to run the migration. So let's go ahead and run PHP artisan migrate. And it ran successfully. If we look at the, the database now, you'll see we have our users table. And if we look at the structure, uh, it looks just like it would uh, if we were using just the standard auth controllers in, in model. OK, so we have our name, email, password and so on. All right. So if we go back to the documentation, uh, the next thing it's going to ask us to do is make sure the reset password emails have the correct reset link by adding these to your model. So let's copy this. So this just brings in the uh, reset password notification package and we want to put this in our user model. So if we go to app, you'll see we have user.php. Um, we're going to go ahead and just put this 
right here. Okay, and then it also wants us to add a function called send password reset notification. So we'll copy that and we're just going to add that down here. All right, and we'll save that. Now, there's generators that uh, we can use to create CRUD resources, like if we wanted to create to do's and all that, and we wanted to access it from the back end, we could do that. So we're going to install those generators. So let's grab this right here. There's actually two, one from Backpack itself, one from Lara, uh, Laracasts, okay, which I think was created by Jeffrey Way, which is a, a really good instructor. So let's go ahead and run that. And then for the Laracast one, you'll see if we're using Laravel 5.4, which we are, we don't want to run this. We actually want to just add this to the composer file, okay, because we want to specify the version. So what we'll do is copy that and go into our composer.json file and go into the required dev. And let's just put that right here, paste that in, save it. And then we need to run composer update once this is done. All right, so let's done. Let's do composer. Oops. And what that what composer update does is it takes a look at this, all the requires and the required devs. And if there's something here that's not installed already, it'll install it. And that's what it's doing. It's installing this right here. Okay. And if you're familiar with Node.js and NPM, it's it's kind of like um, NPM install. All right. So that should be all set. And we should now be able to access the back end. So let's go over to our site and we're going to go to slash admin. And you can see we have the backpack login. All right, so um, it has registration and login functionality. So I'm going to click register and let's go ahead and create an account. Uh, let's see, we'll do brad at gmail.com password and register. And now we're logged in. Now, Usually with admin areas, you're not going to want them to register. So you can easily um, you can remove that functionality if you want. Now, the, the back end here, by default, it's just the base package. So there's not much. It's not much different than the standard um, Laravel authentication dashboard. It just looks a lot better. Um, this is the main page, and it also tells us if the user is online. Um, and then the dashboard that just goes to this page here and then a logout link. All right. Uh, if we click that, it'll kind of just collapse that sidebar. So that's going to be it for the base package. Now we're going to move on to uh, set up a file manager so we can upload files. Uh, we're going to add a language manager. We're going to add some of the other components of backpack. All right. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, guys. So in the last video, we set up the base package for backpack. We have our, our back end login and, um, you know, dashboard. Now we're going to continue on with this documentation and we're going to install backpack crud and what this does is it allows us to create crud resources so any kind of anything that you want to be able to create read update and delete whether it's a to, uh, to do's or it could be customers um, blog posts anything you want and this makes it really easy once we set this up we'll be able to use generators to easily create crud resources because you can either manually um, you know, create the files yourself or you can use a generator. So first thing we'll do is install backpack crud. So let's go over here and go to let's see composer and we're going to say require backpack slash crud. All right. And we're going to also have to add the provider as we do with all packages. So let's copy that and go to our config folder and then app.php go down to the providers and let's go right here and paste that in just like we did with the base service provider. All right. And then once that's done, we're going to have to run a bunch of commands here. So let's see, that's still going, uh, but we're going to grab this and this will publish the assets. Actually, we don't want that comment right there. Just this. So publish and it's called this this elf finder, which has to do with the, the crud package. All right, so that's all set. Let's go ahead and paste that in. 
and we're going to need to run all these commands. Okay, this will publish the CRUD assets. Let's go ahead and whoop. Copy that. Paste that in, run it. Okay, it's really quick. Now we're going to grab this one. And this will publish the CRUD language files, so we'll copy that. This one will publish CRUD and custom LFinder config files. So these commands are just basically creating the files that we need. And then this one here is going to publish custom views, LFinder views. All right. Now we need a place, um, we need a, a folder that will allow us to upload files, okay, a place to, to upload our files. So we can open up the config file systems.php file, which is right here. And if we go down to where the disks are, right here, disks, we have disks for local, for public, Amazon S3, if we were to use that, we're going to add this inside of that disks array. So let's copy it and we'll just paste it right here. And it's going to use the public path and then a folder called upload. So we actually have to create that. So let's save this and then we're going to go over here to our public folder and we're going to create a new uh, new folder called uploads. All right. And that's where all the uploads will go. Now, if we want to add a link to the file manager in our back end, we can do that. Let's just grab this list item here with the link and then we're going to go to our views folder resources views. Uh, vendor wait is this the right place this might not be right um yeah it is okay so vendor backpack base ink and then sidebar.blade.php and then we'll go down to here you see where the dashboard link is we're going to paste that li tag right in there all right and we'll save that and let's go back and reload and now we have a file manager link. If we click that, it takes us to the file manager and we can upload files here. Um, we can actually drag files over. So if we want to try that, let's see, I'll just grab. Uh, I don't want any of that. Let's see, let's just grab. We'll grab a wallpaper here. And there it is. And if we look over here in the uploads folder that we created. There it is wallpaper one JPEG. So our system can now handle uh, back end file uploads, which is really cool. So let's go back to the documentation. And the next thing we can do, and this is optional, but I want to do it. We can install the language file manager. All right. So we're going to just install it with composer and you can see backpack has a lot of different packages that you can optionally add and remove. So let's go ahead and run that. And then of course we need to add the provider copy that and we'll go into config app.php and let's add that right here. Okay, save it. And then we need to uh, run the migration here and we're going to add some tags onto it. Let's copy that. Okay, that's still running. So you can see there's a lot of commands to create the files that we need but it's a lot quicker than manually doing it. All right, so now we're going to run this command. This is um, this first migrate command right here. Okay, and then this one. And then this one. Okay, so this is going to publish the config file. And then this one is going to publish the lang file. All right. And then we'll go down here. We can add these to our sidebar, these links copy. We'll go back to uh, sidebar.blade.php and we'll put them right here and save. And then let's visit the back end and reload. And now we'll notice that we have languages. So we can add now add language, uh, different languages to our site and you can put a flag image. You can see uh, there's some predefined ones here and then the language files. We can create new uh, 
language files so that we can translate into a different language. Uh, just something that you know adds to your your functionality. So what we're going to do next is create a uh, a CRUD resource, and we're going to use customers. So it's going to be kind of a mini CRM. Uh, we'll be able to add customers, you know, create, read, update, and delete, and so on. It'll create a customers table in the back end, and we're going to use a generator to do that. So that's what we'll get in. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to create uh, a CRUD resource for customers. Okay, very, it's going to be very simple. It's only going to be a couple fields, but it'll show you how to do it for other resources if you want with additional fields. So if we go back to the documentation uh, and we go down to CRUD, how to use full example, this will show you every file that's created that you need to create and all that stuff. But we're going to do this using a generator. So if we go down to the very bottom where it says doing it all very fast and you can see that it's telling us to install the generators, which we've already done. Um, and then if we go down here, it tells us uh, the commands we need to run. But right here it says uh, a database table. We need to use Jeffrey Way's generator, which is the Laracast generator. If we click on this link, it'll take us to a GitHub page and uh, we already have it installed if you've been following along but we do need to add um, the service provider and it says you'll only want to use these in local development so you don't want to update the, the providers array what you do want to do is just add this to add the, the register function in the app service provider file so let's copy that and go over to app and then providers and then app service provider you'll see there's an empty register function we're just going to replace that with this one. All right, so that we can use it. So let's save that and go back over here and then we can go back to the documentation. All right, so right here, they're actually using tags as their resource. We're going to use customers. This is making the migration file and you can see they're including the schema, which only has a name. I want to have a name and email and a phone number. So I'm not going to include that schema flag like they did here. We're, we're just going to edit the migration file. So what I'm going to do is just copy this whole command and then just paste it in here for now and then just remove the schema right here. All right. And then we're going to change it to create customers table. All right. And then we'll just cut that out. OK, so we'll save that and let's run that command. And now if we look in the migrations f uh, folder or file database and then migrations and the create customer, we're just going to add to this. OK, so we're going to say table string and this will be the name. All right, and then I'll just copy that and we're going to have the email and you can add more fields if you'd like and the phone number. All right, so let's save that. And then if we go back over here, it wants us to migrate now to actually create the table. So let's say PHP artisan migrate. And now if we go and look at our database, you'll see there's a customer's table. If we look at the structure, there's the name, email and phone. All right. So now that we have that, we need to run this command here. OK, so PHP artisan backpack crud and then we're going to use customer, not tag. All right. And it needs to be singular. So let's go over here and say PHP artisan backpack crud. And we're going to say uh, customer. OK, and we'll run that. And it created the controller, the model and the request. Now what we need to do is add the route. So this right here. Uh, we're going to copy that. Actually, you know what we need to do is uh, create a route, um, a group for the admins or for the admin routes. So let's go to, uh, let's see, routes, and then we're going to go to web.php. And let's create a group here. We'll say admin group. So route group and then here we're going to add in an array we're going to say prefix 
which will be admin. So anything that is admin slash, and then we're going to add middleware, which is also admin. Okay, and then the next parameter is going to be a function. And then in here is where we want to put our route. So I'm going to just paste in what I copied. It's crud resource. And we're just going to change this to customer. And then this is going to be customer crud controller. And we should have that if we look up in controllers, HTTP controllers, and then admin, you'll see customer crud controller. So let's go ahead and save that. And then if we were to go to admin slash customers or is it customer hmm so we're getting a 404 error let's see crud resource customer crud controller so it should be admin slash customer Customer card controller does not exist, which it does. Uh, oh, it's looking, it's not looking in the admin fo um, folder. So let's go back to our route and let's see. So instead of just customer card controller, let's do admin, admin slash customer card controller. There we go. So now we have a customer's area. If we click add customer, let's say John Doe and save. Oh, okay. So uh, mass assignment, we just need to add the fillable array in our model. So let's go to, let's see, we want to go to our models. So it actually created a folder called models and we're going to go to customer. And you can see all this stuff is commented out. We're going to uncomment the fillable array. And then we're going to add the fields we want to be able to fill, which will be name, email, and phone. All right, so now if we go back and try to add him, there he is, John Doe, got the email. We can edit, we can delete, and so on. Now, we're not going to create customer functionality in the front end, which you could because you have the database, the um, the database table for your customers. And you can just, you know, do what we've been doing all through this course and add that functionality to the front end. But this is just like a management system for customers. So no front end. Um, I do want to add it to the side here. So let's go to our sidebar dot blade dot PHP file, which is in your views. And let's put this um, right above the file manager. So let's see, we'll just paste that in. And then let's change this to manage customers. And for the icon, let's do FA dash user. And then for the link, uh, let's see. All we need is the URL. Let's clear this out. Clear all that out. So URL and then in here we can just say admin slash customer. All right, so let's go over here and go back to our dashboard and you see manage customers. Click on that It takes us to that page. All right, and you can do this with any uh, any resource you want, blog posts, whatever. And then you can, you know, on the front end, if you want to create some routes so you can reach in and, uh, you know, get that data. So in the next video, I want to work on the front end. And there's actually something called page man, a page manager that we can use that will give us kind of like a, a content management system. We can create pages on the back end and then we can simply add the routes and, um, you know, have the have those pages display in the front end. So that's what we'll be doing next. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to start to work a little bit with the front end. We're going to add the page manager package, which basically gives us a CMS uh, where we can create pages from the back end. So let's go to BP website dot dev slash admin. 
All right, and then in another tab, I'm just going to open up bpwebsite.dev, which is the front end, and you'll see we just have our, our standard Laravel page here. All right, so if we go to the GitHub page for the page manager, we first need to install it with this command right here. So let's run that. Okay, and then we need to add the service to uh, the service providers to the config file. So let's copy those and go to config. Uh, and then we want to go to app.php, go down to the providers and paste that in. And save it. All right, and then we need to run, we need to publish the views, migrations and page templates. So let's grab this here. Okay, that's still running. All right, and then we'll paste that in and run it. And you can see it created over here a page templates.php. We'll get into that in a few minutes. Um, but now what we want to do is we need to run the migrate. Okay, so or the migration. So let's do PHP artisan migrate. All right, and now if we look at our database we have a pages table. Okay. And if we look at the structure, it has a template, it has a page name, a title, a slug content extras, and some timestamps. All right. Now to add a link, we can actually add to our sidebar in our back end. Let's copy this and go to our views and backpack base ink and then sidebar dot blade. And let's put this We'll put it right above the manage customers. All right, so let's go and check that out. Let's reload and we have pages. Click on that and now we can add pages. All right, so if we click add page, you have this drop down here with templates and you can have templates with different fields. You see for services, it actually has some meta tags and so on. Um, and there's also one called about us. And that just has a title, a slug and content. So I want to use this for our pages, but I don't want to call it about us because I don't think that really makes much sense. I want to call it normal because it's just a normal page. So to do that, we'll go into that page templates file that I showed you right here. And you'll see there's a services with all the different fields. And then there's about us, which is much simpler. Okay, just has content, but I'm just going to change this to normal. And then I just want to get rid of the services, actually. So let's just completely get rid of that. All right, and then we'll save and let's go back over here to pages. Whoops. And then we'll add page and normal is selected by default. And that's the only one there is. All right, so let's create a page. This page name is only seen by admins. Let's create an about page. We'll say about us. The title will be about page slug. So this is what the, you want the URL to be. And that's going to be about. And then in here, we'll just say about us. Let's make that a heading. We have a nice little WYSIWYG editor here. And then under that, we'll just say this is the about page. And we'll save it. Now, this is backpack only gives us back end functionality. So the front end is going to be unchanged. We have to do that by our, you know, on our own. Now, if we go back to the GitHub page uh, right here, it says no front end is provided. Backpack only takes care of the admin panel. All right. But we can create a catch all route here. So basically, if we create a page such as about this will allow us to go to you know our website slash about and load that page. So let's copy this and it's very important. This needs to go at the end of your routes file. So let's go to the routes folder uh, and then we're going to go to web and then we want to go to the very bottom here and paste that in. OK, and let's say page routes and it's going to be uh, page slash subs uh, page controller index where page. All right. So just it's just using some expressions here, but that's going to take care of that. So let's save. And uh, what we also need to do is create the page controller because that's what it's pointing to, but it doesn't exist yet. So what we'll do is go to our uh, terminal here and we'll do PHP 
artisan make controller and we're going to call it page controller all right and then if we go up to our app folder http controllers and we have this page controller which is empty so what we'll do here is let's grab these two lines and we're going to paste those in here so we can use backpack and then let's grab the index function and put that right in here okay so what this is going to do is it's going to search for uh, a view called pages and it's going to pass in all the page data such as the, the title the content and so on any fields that you that you have so let's save that and then we need to create a view so we'll go to resources views and let's see we're going to create a folder called pages inside the views folder so pages and then we need to create a view for the for the template which is called normal right we called it normal so let's say uh, normal dot blade dot php and then in here let's say test okay so we'll save that and then let's go to our front end and go to slash about and we get test okay it's actually loading that view uh, and we we can use that page variable by saying page and then let's say we want the title okay so we'll save that and reload and now we get about so if we go and create a new page and let's see page name let's call this services and the slug we want to be services okay and we'll just make that a heading and save and now if we go over automatically we can just go to services and it shows that page with that dynamic content now I'm not going to build out a complete front end you know all fancy I, I will use bootstrap and I will create a layout though so let's go and create in the views folder a new folder called layouts and we'll create a file called app.blade.php and let's put some HTML tag HTML base code here or markup and in the title um, let's see let's actually put the page title Oops. page title actually you know what we, we don't want to do that because this is the layout I don't think that will work so let's just put the um, website name alright and we'll use bootstrap let's go to boot swatch Oops. And we'll just grab a custom theme here. Let's grab flatly. We'll say download and then just grab this link here. All right. And then we'll put in our link tag with and we'll point it to that file. All right. Let's also use a nav bar. Um, so I'm not going to put the, the markup in here. I'm going to create an include. So new folder INC. And let's say new file navbar dot blade dot php and then we'll just go to get bootstrap dot com and let's go to getting started and then examples and then the starter template do a control u and we'll grab the nav okay throw that in there let's get rid of the fixed top class and let's see what else let's change the project name to BP website and then home link is just gonna go to slash we're gonna get rid of the active class and then about we will go to slash about and then we also have our services page all right save that and then we're gonna include this in the main layout so right here let's say include okay it's going to be in the ink folder dot navbar all right then we're going to create a div right here with the class of um, container and then we want to output the, the section the content section 
actually we want to do yield for the main content. All right. So now we want to go to our pages, uh, our, our normal dot blade dot PHP. And uh, we want to extend that layout. So right here, let's say extends and that's going to be layouts dot app. And let's do section content. OK, and then we also want the title. So right here, let's say at section title and we can get that with page title and then in the content we want page content. All right. Uh, so in the actually, you know what? We can put the title in the actual HTML title. So let's go back to our layout. Whoops, that's not it. App dot blade. And right here, let's go like this. We'll say uh, I think we can do section title. Let's try that. So we'll save, go back to the front end. OK. All right. Now, um, what is that? Where is that coming from? That's weird. Huh. Li. That's really strange. Oh, you know what? The title isn't. Is the title showing? No, the title isn't showing, so this should actually be yield, I guess. All right. Um, let me look at the source here. So I don't know where that semicolon is, is actually coming from. Yeah, guys, I'm not sure where that semicolon is coming from. Um, you, you guys probably don't have it unless you made the same mistake. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the content here. And you can see it's not parsing the HTML. So the reason for that is if we go to uh, normal.blade.php, when we do this with the double curly braces, it doesn't parse HTML. If we want the HTML parsed, then we need to do this syntax, curly brace and then double exclamation marks. So now if I save that and we reload, now it's going to parse the HTML. So we now have a content management system. Now, the only thing that we have to do manually is add the menu links here. Now, you could go on and, and continue with this project and find a way to um, create the functionality so that when you create a page, you can choose to add it to the menu. Um, I'll leave that open as, I guess, uh, a little bit of homework. Uh, but that's going to be it, guys. And again, I apologize for the semicolon. I cannot find where that is actually coming from. If we look in all our views here, there's no semicolon at all. Uh, so I apologize for that. But um, oh, you know what we should do is for the home page. Let's actually create a, a new page called home. Page slug will be home. And let's see, we'll just go ahead and do that. Now, it's going to work if we go to slash home. Um, but if we go to just slash, it's going to show the welcome view. So what I'm going to do is just put a redirect into the routes file. So if we go here, um, instead of returning the welcome view, when we go to slash, let's go ahead and return redirect to slash home. All right, so now if we click on the home link, it takes us to the home view. And there's there's other ways to do it. There's you know probably better ways to do it, but um, that will take care of it. That's a quick fix for that. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this project, and thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.
If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.